having my coffee. It's morning for me in Australia. And wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day. So today I'm going to uh, talk to you a little bit about what to do if you're poor and you'd like to use Mathematica. Okay, now on my system I have uh, Mathematica 11 running and it costs me around $300. Right? I'll probably upgrade to Mathematica 12 as it's coming out soon. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about my story getting started with this. Uh, I've, I've been a Mathematica user since 1996. That's a long time ago. Um, and I, I had a primitive version running and I used that for many many years until say three years ago I finally decided to upgrade. Okay, I was shocked. I was shocked when I did so because well not only everything I knew still worked in the in the new version, but there were so many more uh, new features that made my life incredibly easier. And I was nearly to the point of tears because, wow, some things that I was doing before uh, are now so much more simple. Okay, for example, copy. Copy is LaTeX. Uh, that's a really nice feature in, in the newer versions of Mathematica. Uh, the ability to, to construct uh, 3D printable files, uh, the ability to take data out of images, just like what I did in the last prac. So that's a new feature. I was shocked to be able to do that. Uh, to be able to take data out of audio files and um, manipulate that data and then convert it back into audio. All of these are new and remarkable features and there are many, many more that I probably haven't even discovered yet. Okay, so back to the original point. So what if you're poor? I've been poor plenty of times in my life. And you, you would like to get started in, in, and use Mathematica. Well, they have given you a way to do that for free uh, if you just get a Raspberry Pi. All right, so I have one. I'm holding it here in my hands. I'll show you. It's quite small, you see. I'll take off the cover. All right, I've got a little camera in there. But let me get closer for you. Okay, can you see what this is? So on the end, there are some USB ports and a, and a port for, oh, what is that? Anyway. All right, and on the other end, there is a slot for micro SD. All right, so let me just press, not showing up so well, press and take this out. All right, this is tiny. This is tiny. Can you see that? It's tiny. And uh, so you, this is where the operating system is loaded onto. So this is actually the, the hard drive of the device. Okay, so I'll put it back in. And if you do get one of these, you have to be very careful when you, well, whoops. In fact, I lost it inside just now. Okay, I've recovered it. But you've got to be very careful because the first time I tried this, I actually broke off my micro SD and then have to go back to Kmart and get a new one and try again. So when you do this you have to load the uh, operating system on on the device. Okay so why am I talking about this? Well this device cost me about 50 Australian dollars and so that is less than 50 US dollars and you can look up the conversions. Basically it's a lot cheaper than than well, any other computer that I know of. New. Alright, so this is new. New computer, very cheap. Uh, but, of course, you need, you need other things, right? You need a, a screen. So it takes... It connects to HDMI. There's a HDMI port. So basically, any modern, modern television, probably, or modern uh, computer screen will work. I actually have a another monitor that is that is also small, right? This is so that I can put this under a document camera and and describe what I'm doing under a document camera. 
Now this was a bit of a pain to set up with the Raspberry Pi. I had to, you know, find some extra Linux codes. Okay, so uh, yeah, this this runs on Linux, not Windows. And if you know anything about Linux, uh, you take some getting used to, to to make things happen on there, right? But the point is that if you get one of these, uh, the operating system is free. So I'm talking about the Raspbian operating system for noobs, and I'll pull up the website for that. Have a look. All right, so this is the Raspbian uh, Raspbian website, and they're talking about their operating system, but it says Mathematica 10 now available for your Pi. Okay, so Mathematica 10 comes for free on the Raspbian Noobs operating system. So basically what you have to do is download the Noobs operating system and put that on the micro SD. There are instructions for this and it comes with Mathematica 10 already on it, okay, for free. So that's brilliant. You can do basically every Every exercise that I'm doing, you can do that on Mathematica 10, even though I'm using Mathematica 11. Now, some of the exercises I'll do in the future might have some slightly different syntax in Mathematica 11 or even 12 than are in Mathematica 10. All right, so you can do a lot of things for free. Well, almost free, you have to buy a Raspberry Pi or get one or be given one from your mom or dad if uh, you're in that position. All right, so um, yeah, that's how to get a Raspberry Pi and, um, and use Mathematica for free. Okay, now I am uh, going to continue on and do a couple of exercises. This will probably be a short uh, video. Okay, so I have another Mathematica tutorial set. Here's my name. And this is the link back to my YouTube channel. I will be uploading this to my website, which uh, the description, or the URL for that will be in the description below. Okay, so now what we'll do today, this is mostly an exercise on induction, but today I'm not going to talk about mathematical induction. I'll just do the first two problems, whoops, I'll do the first two problems on this problem sheet. They are about solving a simple equation, all right? So everyone needs to know how to solve a simple equation, and it doesn't take much to learn how to do this. Okay, so let's just work it out. Now, I'll have a bit more coffee, and we can talk about this. All right, so if you were to want to calculate the square root of 39 numerically, well, what would you do? You, you would just take... Let's have a look. S U R T thirty-nine. Shift enter and that just turns it into uh, square root of thirty-nine, right? Puts the symbol over it. Oh by the way, you don't see me using the palettes, but they are also there. If you're new to this, they're very helpful. So you go up to to palettes on the top, basic math assistant. And then some buttons come up, all right? So there's a button for square root, and then you can just fill it in. Sometimes this is useful for me, but but um, often I just find that it gets, oh, you can't see it, right? It's on my other screen, I'll show it to you. All right, so this is what it looks like when you pull it up. And then you can just press things, so I'll do this again. There's a square root button, press it, and then you can fill in what you want to take the square root of, right? That's the alternative to doing it this, this way by writing SQRT. All right, and it has a lot of other things like sums, sums, integrals, derivatives, uh, two by two matrices, vectors, and so on, okay? Where you can fill in um, button exponential, 10 to the power of, sine, cos, and so on. A bit like a scientific calculator, but, but much better. Okay, so let's get rid of that. And and incidentally, all of these there are there are built-in commands to do the same thing. 
And once you spend enough time on this uh, Mathematica, you will you will find that you get to know some of these commands, and it's easier just to to learn to write the commands out, right? If you do a lot. Okay, so we'll close this and get back to what we we're talking about. So so here's the square root. It just displayed the square root. But if I want to actually calculate a numerical approximation of this, well, I just put uppercase n in front, square bracket. This is a function. And incidentally, uppercase n is protected, so I cannot say uppercase n equals 5, for example. It will complain, right? Because it's protected, it's meant to be used for taking numerical values. So let's have a look. If we just do this and shift enter, well, we get a numerical approximation of that square root. Okay, and then if you click here and, and press enter, you get more decimal places. Okay, but it stops uh, at what looks like 14 decimal places after, something like that. Okay, now what if you're not satisfied with that? Well, that's okay. Mathematica has arbitrary precision uh, arithmetic, so you can put a comma and say, I want to compute this to 100 decimal places or as many as you like. So let's have a look. Wow, look at that. 100 decimal places of the square root of 39. And you can keep going. You can make this 1,000, 10,000, and so on. And you get you know, that many decimal places of the square root of 39 or whatever you are calculating. So that's really convenient um, because if you're doing some theoretical mathematics, precision is everything, right? Okay. So now that we have done that, I'll take this precision down and talk about the rest of this exercise. Okay, so what if you wanted to do this a different way? Because this is uh, an exercise on solving equations. So let's have a look now. The square root of 39 is a root of the quadratic polynomial x squared minus 39. Right, shift enter and it will display it like this. Okay, so what if we want to you solve to solve this and, and thereby find the square root of 39? Well I could put solve this. All right, I don't need the x, the x, but I can put it in, comma, x, to say I'm solving for x. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, I have to say what it's equal to. Equals, equals, zero. All right, I want to find the zeros or roots of this. Okay, now it gives me the two answers, because this is a quadratic, so there are two answers to this. Plus or, not, plus or minus root 39. Okay, maybe that's not what you want. Right? Sometimes you do want the radical uh, solution to a polynomial that's not necessarily of, well, that's solvable, that's what I want to say, Sol a solvable uh, polynomial. But if you want the numerical value, you just put an n in front. Okay, so let's have a look. n, n solve. All right, now we get the two numerical answers, and they are of um, probably when we put shift, when we press enter here at this spot, we will get. Well, let's have a look. We get the two answers uh, where they are truncated after say 14 or 15 decimal places. Okay, so that's what you get. Now, if you want more precision, I think you can do that. Let's try 50 decimal places. Sure. Okay, so you can solve equations to quite high precision. Alrighty, now um, you can do more complicated examples like use the resultant and some other things to solve systems of equations. That's useful, but I'll save that for another more complicated video. Alright, let's do the next exercise here. Calculate the square root of 3 to 200 decimal places. <clears throat> All right, well, look, that, that's easy. I just changed this to a 3, change that to a 200, shift enter in there. I have the square root of 3. 
to 200 decimal places. <clears throat> the next question says, does the decimal expansion of root 3 repeat? Well, there are ways to do this, right? So if you wanted to, if you wanted the machine to do this, you could, you could, you would have to convert this decimal expansion to a list or a string, and then um, do operations on the list or string. But let's just uh, say why we're, why we're talking about this. So the decimal expansion of a number is corresponds to a rational number if and only if there is a a, a substring of the decimal expansion that, that repeats. Right. So let's just see an example. If we take, well, I'll I'll talk about something um, divided by eleven. So let's look at seven elevenths. All right. Seven elevenths. There it is. Let's take its numerical. Uh, approximation to 200 decimal places. All right, what do you notice? 0 0.63, 0 0.63, 0 0.63, 0 0.63, and so on. This repeats, right? So that tells me it's rational <clears throat> from the decimal expansion. So when you have a repeating decimal expansion, the number is rational, right? That's easy to prove. And in fact, uh, theoretically, it's easy to get the um, to get back 7 elevenths from that, right? That's a topic for another video. Um, so, yes, anyway, let's talk about the square root of 3. So when you look at it, you can't discern any repeating pattern in there, right? So that tells you that, well, I mean, it tells you it's probably irrational, right? And you can easily prove that the square root of 3 is irrational by theoretical methods. Okay, so we conclude that root 3 is, is likely irrational based on this numerical approximation. Okay, so that should be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this information. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. Thank you. See you next time.